Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Mr. Bartol. Um, I have a question based on a letter, a heartbreaking letter that I received from one of my constituents. Um, her name's Diane um, from Sumas, Washington. Before the democratic reforms were enacted, uh, Diane's 25-year-old daughter, Sarah, delayed seeking doctor re recommended care because she didn't have health insurance. We all know that one of the greatest challenges in health reform has been bringing young Americans into the system, but tragically for Diane, her daughter's lack of health care ended up being fatal. Um, she died at the tender age of 25. Diane wrote to me and she said, quote, we didn't know her headaches were a symptom of a life-threatening condition. She was recommended an MRI, but at the time she didn't have health care and was afraid of the cost thinking her headaches might just be migraines. Um, we struggle daily with our loss of seven and a half years ago, deal with guilt and anger that we live in this wealthy country where young people are afraid to get what could be a life-saving test because of the cost, end quote. I don't think there's any, any parent in this room who wouldn't be moved by that story. It's awful. Um, but it also highlights the important distinction between access and coverage, and it doesn't matter if working families like Diane's just have access to health insurance, it matters that they have coverage for the doctor-recommended doctor care that they need, um, because it can literally be the difference between life and death. So we are looking at this subtitle um, that you have said um, would estimate is a revenue loss of $400 million over 10 years, is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Um, so given the loss of revenue there, uh, what impact it, would that have, given that we're it's taking away revenue that can be used um, for health care? Um, what impact does that loss of revenue have on coverage for families like Diane's? Uh, the, coverage, uh, the coverage questions go to the broader scope of uh, the U.S. health care uh, system. This, this provision is really just about uh, deductible expenses of health insurance providers. What happens in terms of the federal budget uh, and how the members choose to spend those funds is, is up to this committee and others in Congress. But given that this is less revenue and um, we're supposed to be only looking at this particular subtitle by itself because we are not talking about the entire bill, is there anything that this subtitle would do to improve coverage for um, a family like Diane's? Um, I uh, uh, really shouldn't comment on the overall coverage effects of how this weaves into the entire package. Again, that's part of the analysis that's still, uh, still forthcoming. So we have a, a piece of legislation that we're talking about that just um, reduce, cause, creates a tax break for insurance companies um, reduces revenues by $400 million, um, your number, and um, does nothing to help families across our country, does nothing to help provide coverage. If anything, probably undermines that by reducing the revenues that are available to support those families. Um, that's very disappointing that we're only talking about a tax break and we're not talking about families and coverage at all. Um, Unless we have some, and we also have, we don't have the information that you discussed, the CBO score or the distribution. So until we have that, there's, there's no other information that's going to help us understand um, at all, once again, um, how legislation like this really helps families in providing quality coverage to Americans across the country. Well, as I did report earl earlier, the, uh, uh, my colleagues working with the CBO and the CBO uh, uh, has uh, said that they uh, will release uh, their estimate as soon as it's ready. Uh, they hope early next week. They will include effects on federal budget, effects on health insurance coverage, and effects on premium. But we're supposed to be voting on this today, so I guess we'll be voting on it in the absence of any of that information. Um, thank you for your time. I yield back. 